Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. Today, we're talking coffee. Yes, it's the third most popular drink on the planet. Are you familiar with it? For most of us, coffee is just another drink that we use to wake up in the morning, get our day going, get that mood right, you know what I'm saying, just to get us through the day. There's all different varieties of coffee. They've got flavors for everybody. You can have robust, light, medium, dark, espresso. You've got people who specialize in serving you up the best cup of coffee, but where does that coffee come from? Today, we get a special invitation to go all the way down to Central America to interview the family estates of the farm that won 2019's Best Geisha on the Planet, where one pound of their Geisha coffee sold for over a thousand dollars crazy so given the opportunity to go and visit the farm that produced this award-winning coffee we just couldn't say no in this video we're going to have a chance to talk to mr wilford lamastas as well as some of the people behind the scenes check out the whole process and even get a chance to taste some of that delicious geisha coffee let's go to panama So you guys won 2019. Best of Panama. We won the two top categories, which are the geisha categories, meaning that we won the geisha process category and the geisha wash category in 2019 and 2018 to both years. Two of the top, wow. the two top categories. What has that done for your for your farm? Well, you know what? Uh, remember, this started more than 100 years ago, 120 years ago, as a matter of fact. Then uh, that is something that we feel very proud because our team is well-trained team. The, the success is really belongs to them because I, I'm just the leader. So <laughs> but, we're but very proud that, well that we're very proud that, uh, yeah, that we have good quality because we work hard every day to achieve good quality, which is what the people are after. Were you blown away nice. when your coffee <laughs> hit that dollar figure? Was it blown away? Yeah, of course, yes, cars. you are blown away whenever you, you, your results are you know, positive, which in our case, we try to do the best to come up with the, you know, the best. So we, of course, we won the best of Panama and we also got a 98 in the coffee review. 98 is the, the only coffee that has gotten a 98 points in the coffee review is our coffee from here. We have gotten 97 and other growers from Panama and from other countries have gotten 97. But in November, the first time in 20 years that we got, uh, somebody got a 98 points in the coffeereview.com, it was our coffee. So what a, what a wonderful honor. We're at a, a coffee finca in the highlands of Panama, in the mountains of Panama, Elida Estates. Yeah. The last year we won the first place with the best geisha in all the world, in all Panama. Yeah. With, and the price for one pound of geisha was $1,029. A thousand? <laughs> yeah, one pound. If you want to drink one cup of that, of that coffee, you need, to pay around, you need to pay around $140. $140 yeah. per cup? For, per cup. If exactly. you want to drink the yes. award-winning geisha coffee. Wow. So what makes geisha coffee so special? The geisha flavor is an exotic. Why? Because you can identify when you're copying citrus, citrus flavor, floral flavor, jasmine, jasmine tea, wow. a caramel, so a lot of different flavors. So it's an special. In all this area, we have a volcanic soils and we have different microclimate. We have different elevation. What happened with that? When you have elevation, probably can start at 1,700 meters from sea level. What happened? If you are going more higher, you have more quality because you have a lot of minerals and nutrients in, in your soil for the volcanic lava. Yeah, and another important thing, we are in the middle of two different national parks. The national park La Amistad and National Park Volcán Barú. Okay. That is so special for us because it is something called Bajareque. Oh yes, of you, course. You know where is Bajareque? 
I, I'm, I'm familiar with the phenomenon. Yeah. Can, but, but explain to our I'm going to explain you what is that phenomenon. The Parque Nacional La Amistad uh -huh. is in front of us now, to the northeast of Panama. Mm -hmm. What happened? That, that park are really close to the Caribbean side. Yeah. And the National Park, Baru Volcano, is really close to the Pacific Ocean. That's what right. happened? The cold wind with the hot wind, that kind of mercury climate produced that mist here, oh, and that is called Bajareque. All the Boquetenian people know that like a Bajareque. Yes. Yeah. And or, it, what's interesting or is that it also produces yeah. the most extraordinary rainbows. And so there's like a rainbow season yeah, here you, because of that. Yeah, because when you have some wind and mix with the, the less misty, produce the rainbow. That's all, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. So geisha is a high altitude plant. So if somebody wanted to grow this at home, unless they lived uh, on a mountain with volcanic soil, they probably wouldn't get a very good uh, bean. Exactly. Here in this farm in Fincalida, we have three different varieties of the Arabica family. The typica, Catuai, and Geisha. But what happened? The Geisha produce less quantity, but more quality. So you guys are no, no stranger pr to winning awards for your coffee. Yeah. And this most recent one was the most the world has ever seen. Mm -hmm. We need to create like an exotic flavors. For example, fermentation can change the flavor, but not the quality of the coffee. Interesting. That is special for us because when we are going to compete, we, we can have another flavor, totally sure. different than the other, for other farms. From a, from a high level perspective, mm -hmm. I know a lot of folks are interested yeah. because they don't know how coffee's made. What's your process of how to actually make okay. coffee from the plant to the cup? Okay, the first process is go to the plantation and pick up the red beans. Just red the, beans just only? Just red beans. Okay. You have five months to do the harvest. The harvest starts in December to April. Okay. Yeah. What happened? When you complete that process, you brought the coffee to the industry. Is the coffee being picked by machines? No, by hand. Wow. It's all this manual. Okay. We have our 60 hectares here, but 40 in production. Pick the coffee. We can decide if I can do the natural way or the wash way. Mm -hmm. Okay, I decide do the natural way. I put the coffees, for example, in rustic floors or in African beds to dry. That is the second step. So pick it, then dry it. And dry it. Okay. And then we can put the coffee in resting time or, or other people say in repose. Yeah, in that, in that process you can extract the principal or the most important characteristic in the coffee, for example, in the flavor, in the aromas, in the fragrance, in the acidity, in the body of the, cor in the, of the coffee. Just you can identify that characteristic in the coffee. And that is important. And the more, the more uh, it rests, the more complex the flavor mm -hmm. becomes. Yeah. And then when you complete the repose time or, or the resting time, you can peel the coffee. When you peel the coffee, you are taking out all the different skin of the coffee and you will have the green coffee. Bean. The big green coffee bean. Okay. Yeah. When you complete that, you need to do the selection. You can do the manual selection, electronic selection, or machine selection. that then you can uh, separate the coffee and you can decide if you can roast the coffee or export in green beans and here we have the roasting room this machine you can roast around 15 pounds of coffee you put here and 80 minutes or 10 minutes you have all your coffee roast and here in this is the last part you will extract all the humidity in the bean and that's it 
and you are ready to drink. So it's a real treat, yeah. to, if you're a coffee lover, to get your hands on some Geisha yeah. coffee. Wow, that smells wonderful. How could you even describe the flavors? Floral, nutty, earthy, caramel. It, it, it's unlike any coffee I've ever had. It's not bitter like regular coffee. It's totally different. It's actually, it's got a kind of a chocolatey undertone to it. Wow, that's, that's really good. No, it's like oja, it's like cascara, see? This is the peeling from the, the coffee bean uh, after, you know, whenever they, they go through the resting period. This is the peeling from it. What they do is they use this to make tea with, and we're about to taste geisha uh, tea. Here we go. Huh. Wow, that's crazy. You should taste this. This is so wild. It has a, an, a like a tamarindo sort of element to it. It's sort of slightly tangy a little bit. It's sweet. It's got a really nice developed, almost fermented style of flavor. Mm. I don't think I've ever tasted anything quite like that. All right, everybody, we are back in our kitchen and I want to send a huge thank you to Wilford Lamastus and the Lamastus family for opening up Elida Estates, showing us how their award-winning coffee is grown. What I'm most excited about is that Elida Estates allowed me to pick a handful of coffee beans so that I could do an experiment with their coffee in this kitchen for you. Check it out. Look at these coffee beans, absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna be running a unique experiment to see if we could take the world's finest coffee and make it even better. The anatomy of a coffee bean is actually relatively simple. There's just a, several layers, an outer layer, there's a pulp layer, there's the hull, there's the green bean inside. And so what we're gonna do in order to achieve this particular process is we're gonna go ahead and remove the outer layer or the cascara from the bean itself. And this process is actually pretty simple. All you got to do is squeeze gently on one side of the coffee bean and it pops right on out, just like that. As I go through the process of separating the cascara or the shell of the coffee bean, I'm going to be left with a hole where the green bean is inside of it. And this hole is surrounded by this kind of like a sweet, pulpy, almost pectin layer called mucilage. And that's what that is right there. So it's going to feel very wet. Uh, right here to my right, we've got our... Uh, cascara, we're gonna dry that and turn that into a beautiful tea. This next step is quite possibly the most important step in the entire process, and if we can get it to work, there's a good chance we'll have amazing results. Be sure to stick around for part two so you can see what happens next, and I wanna take a second to thank the patrons of the channel. Thank you guys for your support. Also, if you'd like to become a supporter of our channel, check out our Patreon page by clicking on that link in the description box below. If you're new here, I'd like to say welcome. Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to check out some of our other videos, and if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos all the time. We'll see you in the next one.